But when, they, when newspapers paid to have the recount done, it turns out that, in fact, Bush really did win Florida. So he, so he won the Electoral College <laughs> legitimately and, really and lost disputable. the popular vote. What? That's disputable. Well, I, again, I'm, I'm speaking to someone who wasn't in favor of him winning, and, and, there, and there were a lot of belief that there was a, that fraud. Frankly, Democrats claim that there's fraud in, in Republican states, and Republicans claim there's fraud in Democrats. And, you know, John Kennedy probably wouldn't have been president unless Richard Daley had dead people voting, you know, like crazy, you know? Is that a good thing? Yes, it is. Why? Because our, the person we like got elected. Yeah, my point was that, that, that the court has just accrued tremendous power that it was not originally supposed to have. Uh, in fact, you know, in the present election, uh, you know, if, if, if one more justice is, is let's say that, that McCain becomes president and is to nominate one more justice, you could get one more very conservative justice and then somebody would bring in some way this whole concept of the unitary presidency where the president becomes quite dictatorial uh, before the court, and the court ratifies that. And so the court becomes an enabler of things that would appall the founding fathers uh, who, who sought a balance of government among the branches, who wanted to lay emphasis on the legislative. That was the people's branch. And if you look at the Constitution, the enumerated powers of the legislative are way more than the judiciary or the executive. The executive is just an administrative uh, position. The president wasn't supposed to be this very powerful character. Now, I grew up uh, in an era, and it was the liberal era, uh, in which um, there was, uh, you know, the concept of the living constitution was popular, and, and the idea that, well, now we need to have a more powerful president because we have... Um, these international quote-unquote responsibilities and the modern world is different, yada, yada, yada. Um, there's always excuses for accruing more and more power in, in an executive authority and taking it away from the people's branch. And um, I would hold that, that this imbalance uh, in some ways was inherent in some of the problems in the Constitution. And if you, if you revamp the Constitution in such a way as to have uh, more of a cabinet parliamentary system, then the executive would be more uh, curbed somewhat by legislative power and by the people who could call for a vote of confidence, who could, an unpopular government, you wouldn't have to go through this incredibly <coughs> complex and politically more than charged impeachment process, which is totally dysfunctional in this country. Uh, in order to get rid of a government that is, that is dysfunctional or unpopular. Uh, 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 the way it is now, we're stuck with those governments, with, with a, a government like that. And they pretty much do, and the president pretty much does what he wants to do. And now we've got signing statements. Uh, signing statements is, is when a president, uh, uh, the, the, this current president, will actually make statements that he's going to enforce certain aspects of, of some bill that was just passed and not other ones. Well, he doesn't have the right to do that any more than the court had the right to choose the president. So we have two branches now usurping power that the Founding Fathers never gave them. Uh, and, you know, to use Antonin Scalia's idea of being an originalist and the intent of the Founding Fathers, maybe that's relevant. Maybe that's Do you relevant. feel comfortable about having Congress, which gets re-elected, ninety-eight percent of its members get re-elected. Nobody really ever runs against an incumbent congressman. They have an incredible, and how much really original thought comes out of the U.S. House of Representatives? Oh, I don't know. Barney Frank says something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's at least four hundred and thirty-four of them. Let's open up the floor. Okay. Let's open up the floor. I just like kind of a general question, more of a clarifying question. Um, Steve, you said that the and yeah, maybe I just maybe this is totally relevant. But yeah. Steve, you said that the Supreme Court um, elected the president. Um, yeah, Josh, you said that uh, by by stopping chose the yeah. what's that by or chose the president by stopping this recount. Yeah. However, um, Josh, you said that uh, or Dr. Marquis, I'm sorry, Dr. Marquis, that was Dr. Burke, I'm sorry. Looks like Steve's flat with me. But uh, you said that he in fact did win. Well, I mean, bottom line, and, and the, by the, 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 
The Electoral College, I, I would disagree. The Electoral College exists for originally some arcane reasons, but I was, my mother, who's a rock rib Democrat, I was trying to explain to her the significance of it. If you, the Electoral College is based on the number of electors that each state has is the number of congressmen plus the senators. So, for example, Oregon has seven. We have five congressional districts, too. Calif the, the smallest states, minimum, have two senators and one congressperson. So Which they have three. those positions are decided upon how many, the, the actual um, quantity of those positions is decided by the population. Exactly, because the, because the number of uh, the number of Congress people is, is divided up that way. Yes. So it done. is relative to the number of, however, you can't have, and as I think happened in four elections in 43, where, where someone won the popular vote and lost the electoral. The concept, however, makes some sense if you look behind it, and that is if all you cared about was the number of votes, then nobody would pay any attention to smaller states at all because there are really not very many votes to be had there. And, and what's interesting is you're seeing an election, for example, you will not see Obama or McCain in Oregon. Right. And the reason you won't is we are considered relatively a safe to very safe state for Obama. You won't see Obama, you won't see Obama in Texas because that's considered a safe state. You're going to see all of the activity in Colorado, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Florida, because that's where that's where, where the electoral college could tip. But to answer your question directly, um, I guess the, the bottom, at the end of the day, Michael Moore was interviewed on uh, David Letterman after the 2004 election and said, well, and the, and the, and the, when a lot of people were very unhappy, he included, that George Bush got reelected and said, well, how, why did he get reelected? And Moore said, because he got more votes. And it essentially is true. Electoral votes. Well, in, in 2004, he got more votes, okay. both electoral and popular. And in, and although, again, you could dispute it, one of you, the audience members says, well, maybe they didn't. It, it was the New York Times and a group of, I think, relatively neutral newspapers that wanted to, wanted, went, wanted to go behind the Supreme Court's decision and say, what would have happened if you'd counted all those votes? Well, it was sort of, you know, anticlimactic six months later, but the result that they came up with was that Bush very narrowly won Florida. And if you won Florida, then he would have legitimately won the Electoral College, even though he lost the popular vote. Which my question is then that if it's based on pop, because well realistically the it seems to me that this electoral college system, um, I guess was designed to uh, better represent the people. I would hope that it would be it was designed, designed to make sure that the smaller states didn't get ignored. Essentially. So I mean, uh, well, essentially then then wouldn't you say that those people? So so does there because they're from a smaller state they're vote means more, per, in, on an individual basis, their vote would mean more than? I mean, if it does, in the Electoral College, it does mean that. Which, I mean, clearly, if you live in, the, in a smaller state like Nevada in this election, in Nevada, Colorado, uh, Kentucky, I mean, some of those swing states, your vote's worth a lot more than a vote in Oregon or California. And what entitles them to that power, those might... Well, I'm not saying entitled. it's necessarily right. I'm, yeah. Under the Electoral College, being in a swing state is... I think the land is the ideology behind that concept, is that there's still land represented, therefore there's still resources represented. So say there's one rich guy in Alaska that owns the whole state, his vote's worth as much as the million people that live in Oregon. Because he has those resources and he has that land which is part of the United States. Well, but they only have, they only have three electoral votes. And we have I know, but that's but you understand. What, okay, so his one vote is worth as much as the 500,000 people in Oregon. If the, if the electoral college is confusing and awkward for us today, it's because... It was at a, when they contrived it, and they had those accidents like 1800 for the Jeffersonian election, where we ended up with, with a vice president getting candidate getting the second number of being placed second in the vote, almost winning the presidency, and that created this huge crisis, and they had to adjust it and take <coughs> and revisit all this. And so it was always it was contrived in its inception, and it was never it was awkward from the beginning. And I, this idea that it's somehow you know, we're, we're stuck with it. It's, it's, I, I'd go more along with Steve's argument against it. And, uh, this is, this troubles a lot of politics. This is a big area in political science. So this is where I think we're able to, we're able to criticize it in feels like history and public science. In the legal field, you have to kind of work with the system. And, that, and I think that's a difference we share. You know, and that's where I mean we need to kind of be talking to each other and sharing that way.